Hi, I'm Nick Tom from the University of Nottingham. I'm going to report to you on a job that we did for Tarmac a few years ago. And the subject, as it says on the bottom, stress absorbing membrane interlayers, otherwise known as SAMIs. Now, what's a SAMI for? A SAMI is mainly to counter reflective crack problems. This is a concrete road with joints in it. It works fine as a concrete road, but if you need to overlay it, you've got the problem of overlaying joints and reflective cracks coming through. The SAMI is designed to control that. Let's illustrate what goes on. So day and night, you've got expansion contraction going on. The sealant should do its job, not a problem. Put an overlay on it on the other hand, and as it expands day and night, you are likely to find that the crack develops. So in this case, I don't know if you can see it on your screens, but the crack is getting a little bit wider all the time, and you end up with a maintenance problem. And there you are, sort of thing that you can see on the road surface. Stick a SAMI in there, and the idea is that as it opens and closes, the asphalt is protected. The SAMI absorbs the strain, means that you don't get the concentration of stress and strain in the ordinary asphalt that you had before. The result, no cracking. Of course, it's not just the thermal issue that you've got to worry about, you've got traffic as well. So in a normal concrete road, of course it deflects under a wheel, but the sealant does its job, no problem. Stick an overlay on top, and with apologies for the rather crude graphics here, it, uh, the overlay flexes backwards and forwards, and eventually you'll end up with a crack, something like you can see there. Stick a SAMI there, and what happens is you hope that the SAMI is a sort of a, a barrier that stops the crack from, or at least inhibits the crack, from coming up from the bottom. So that's broadly speaking what we're trying to do. Now onto the task that we did for Tarmac. I've broken it up into four subtasks, as it were, task one here. First of all, just how good is this stuff that we're using, this SAMI stuff? Well, we need to do a test for crack resistance, which is a fatigue test. And this is the one we used, two-point bending. It's, um, well, it is governed by standards, and although it's not a very usual test to do, it's very well controlled. The specimens are this down here, these funny shaped things. And what we're doing is we're moving the tops of the specimens backwards and forwards, making them bend. You can do a bit of analysis like this. And the, there's a maximum down here, maximum stress and strain. So we expect the crack to develop somewhere down there. And it does. It works very well. It's a very well controlled test. Here are some results on the SAMI material that we were testing. And you can draw a line in this space, logarithmic space. We plot it as a strain over here against a number of cycles until failure, except in this test we don't really get failure. So 50% stiffness reduction is what it says. By way of comparison, this is a line through a typical set of results for an asphalt concrete, an ordinary asphalt, you could say. And because it's a logarithmic scale, it actually means that our SAMI material is about 250 times more crack resistant than an ordinary asphalt. That's pretty good. It's uh, obviously packed with all sorts of uh, bitumen and modifiers and what have you to make it work very well. So we've characterized our SAMI. The next thing is, how do we simulate the system? Well, this is how we did it. We made little trays like this. The rubber represents the foundation. We've got a layer in two halves, and this represents the joint or crack that we're trying to overlay. Then the SAMI system, and then the overlay material. And we run our wheel up and down it, and eventually we find that we're getting cracks, sometimes from the top, sometimes from the bottom. There's good reasons why we should get both. Actually, that's what it looks like. It's a very, very simple system. We simply hang weights on the end and allow it to generate a force. We move the 
specimen itself backwards and forwards, the wheel just stays there. So looking in more detail, this is what we are, this is the bit we're interested in. So we've got our, our crack or joint, whatever it is down here, Sammy, if we've got a Sammy, and then the asphalt's over the top. We are quite expecting there will be a top down crack. We are expecting there might be a bottom up crack, except the Sammy might stop it happening. And so we might actually get a crack developing from there instead. And you do often find that that happens. Here's a set of results. I'll show you a few of them. So in this case, uh, we've got the black one is control. That means no Sammy, full asphalt, same thickness. So we've just, instead of this, is it 10 millimeters, I believe of Sammy, we've put in an extra thickness of the, the asphalt overlay material. And this is showing that we've got a crack coming from the bottom, we've got a crack coming from the top and they met somewhere over there. The blue one, where we've got the Sammy, we've got a crack from the top, a crack from the bottom, and actually they never quite met, but we extrapolated the lines and got what we were predicting might be the result. Sometimes it's difficult to see exactly what happens at the end of the test. You'll notice that the bottom up crack is significantly inhibited by the Sammy. Actually, the top down crack seems to be a little bit, um, well, actually a lot inhibited in this case. And the truth is that you get a lot of scatter in these top down crack um, rates. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to that, but this one I would certainly pay attention to. And if I look through some other results, we've changed the, I've changed the load, changed the number of rubber sheets, so the stiffness of the foundation, we get a different result. But we do tend to find that the bottom up crack is inhibited. In this case, the actually the one with the Sammy cracked from the top more easily, but I'm not going to blame the Sammy. It did its job. It stopped the bottom up crack from developing properly. Here's another one. Again, the bottom up crack actually started more or less the same in the two cases, but in this case, it never developed properly if the Sammy was there. And I think this is the final example. A little bit odd what happened at the beginning, but in the end, the Sammy did its job and stopped the crack. And again, this is just an extrapolation, so who knows exactly what would have happened. But the point is, it lasted a fair bit longer than the control specimen. So we consistently find that the Sammy is working in the laboratory. It is doing something under a wheel. But of course, that's not good enough. We now have to develop a an approach which allows us to translate that into a real road situation. So how do we do that? Well, there's a few steps that have to be done. First of all, we need a mathematical equation to express the, the crack development rate. And here it is, dc by dn, that's how quickly the crack is developing, is a constant times the strain at the crack tip, you could say, in that area anyway, and to the power of another constant. How do we know what these constants are? Well, we oops, sorry, we did this test. And this test, if you remember, produced some cracking like that. We can analyze this test to find out what strain we've got, and we can kind of back calculate what these parameters must have been to give us the results that we've got. So we did that, and we found values of K and N. That now allows us to model the behavior of the beam test. So the beam test, well, conceptually, you've got two things potentially going on. When the wheel is in the middle, you've got the asphalt overlay bending like that, and you've got strain there. When the wheel is offset from the middle, you've got it kind of doing an S-bend like so, and you've got some crack concentration there, and to be truthful there as well. So this can be calculated, and we can use the the K and N that I just spoke about to predict the crack propagation rate. And we can check it against what actually happened. And here we go. Prediction, which is the prediction. Here we are. Prediction, actual, not too bad for these six tests. It's not only six tests, but nevertheless, it's not bad. So I think I've written that. Not bad. Method, probably right. So if the method is probably right, it means that we can now go beyond a simple beam arrangement and we can actually try to apply this to a pavement. So that's 
the fourth and final part of what we did, extend it to a real pavement. Well, first off, it's more complicated. So we've got to consider, let's just go through those. We've got to consider cracking that happens very close to the wheel because of the concentration of stress and strain there. We've got to consider this sort of cracking. So just an ordinary road, really, with an ordinary foundation, a lot of stress and strain at the bottom of the asphalt. We've got our two reflective cracking situations that I was referring to just now from the beam test. And of course, we mustn't forget the thermal. This means expansion contraction. The joint is getting narrower and wider day and night. So we've got to take account of those. We can't ignore the fact that it's a 3D situation in the pavement, so there'll be some mathematical work to be done there. But the, the main process that we're doing is we are predicting crack growth from the top and from the bottom, depending on the strain. If I click it again, here we go. So when the crack's gone that far, we're working out what sort of strain we've got right there near the tip of the crack, and that will tell us how quickly the crack is going to proceed. Same thing for this one from the bottom. For the case of the thermal cracking, we need temperature. And so this happens to be some temperature data that we got from the uni a university site. And actually, it's, you can just about see down here, we've got to midnight to midnight going through a day, day, night. This is one month. I don't know which month of the year it was, but every day we've got temperature data. And we made use of that to try and convert a typical English year into a number of um, standard cases, if you like, for expansion and contraction. So having put all that lot together, we stuck it in a spreadsheet. It's not a dramatically complex thing to do. And in fact, two spreadsheets. So one of them is to do with traffic related effects. And this is just a, a, a sheet that covers the input data and some output over here, in this case, so many million, so many years. And to get some sort of life at the end of it. And in this case, thermal action as well. And the two spreadsheets are combined. So we end up with a with a, a life which combines the effects from the two different damaging systems, you know, the traffic and the, the thermal effect. So let's look at some examples. In this case, 60 millimeter overlay to cement bound granular material correct at three meter centers. Expressing the output like this, 60 millimeters, here it is on the left hand side. That's the thickness of the asphalt. The blue line says that a crack is coming down from the top. The red line says a crack is coming up from the bottom and the, they meet. And the life in this case is just over 0.4 million standard axles, I suppose it was, that we put on. This is without a SAMI. So you wouldn't actually expect this sort of pavement to do very well. But that's against traffic. We've also got a little note here, crack due to thermal action, 0 0.5 years. Also not particularly good. Whether it cracks because of thermal or whether it cracks because of traffic, of course, depends how much traffic you've got each year. Now we stick a SAMI in there. Uh, 10 millimeter thick SAMI layer. And this is the result we get. So no longer is it 0 0.4 million. It's somewhere up here, about 3.3 million before the crack has gone all the way through. What's that? About eight times as much life. In terms of traffic, but look about thermal. It used to be half a year. It's now 90 years. I appreciate that is purely theoretical. But what it says is that the thermal cracking problem has gone away. All you've got to worry about now is the traffic. And the traffic, the life against traffic damage has, has gone up significantly as well in this case by eight times. So it illustrates that certainly for this case, a SAMI application is, you would think, very well worthwhile. I'll give you one more example. Here it is. Airfield, Boeing 747. So we're talking about a 25 ton wheel load here. 100 millimeter overlay, 
to pavement quality concrete, joints at five metre centres. This is what happens with no SAMI. The traffic says, the traffic uh, prediction against traffic loading says there's going to be top down cracking and bottom up cracking, but the top down is dominating and the life is, well, it would be about 0.2 million, 200,000 load applications, which actually for an airfield is quite a lot. But this is not a lot. Crack due to thermal action, 0 0.9 years. This is our problem. If we put the SAMI in there, replacing again the bottom 10 millimetres with SAMI, this is what happens. Very similar traffic induced damage. Actually, it's slightly less life. And that's because the SAMI has quite a low stiffness value. But that's not the point. This is the point. Less than a year has gone up to 200 years. Again, of course, 200 years is purely theoretical. But again, it says the thermal problem has gone away. All we've got to worry about is the traffic. And in the case of an airfield, well, that probably was good enough for the traffic that we are expecting. And so, you know, job done. And in fact, SAMIs are very often used in overlaying concrete on airfields. It seems to have been proved to be cost effective for that. So in conclusion, in the work that we did, I'm very confident we showed they work in the laboratory. But as I said, that's not really the issue. I'm pretty confident that the predictions we're making are very sensible predictions because we've used the laboratory test to calibrate a method. And so what I'm really saying is the method works. If we are applying our method correctly to a pavement, then we should be getting good predictions for the pavement. And even if you don't believe the predictions in absolute terms, the relative gain that you're getting from the SAMI, I'm confident is being well predicted, well calculated. So the conclusion is for a number of different pavements, particularly where you've got reflective cracking, SAMIs can give, well, do give excellent performance. You've got to be discriminating. You can't just use them on any pavement type and expect they'll always give you 10 times as much life or anything crazy like that. But use it in the right pavement. And as I've just illustrated, you can actually get very large increases in time until failure. And as it says here, the most dramatic results when it's thermally driven cracks. So I hope that gave you a little bit of an insight into SAMIs if you've never used them or come across them before. And um, it's been a pleasure. Thanks.